Hi. The latest enhancements focus on new ways of editing steps and to jump around between bars to make editing even quicker when only using the sequencer for composing. I also just created a Discord server to have a central place for more discussion. The link for that is in the video description. Keyboard mode is the biggest new feature. To access it, the Alt button is held down while pressing the step I want to edit. This opens a new arrangement of buttons in the grid with notes in what is commonly referred to as a fourth layout. It's exactly like each row is one string of a bass guitar. The lighting pattern is used to indicate the notes of a scale, and there's a lot of scales to choose from. The white lights are always the root note of the key I'm in, and I can change what key that is. And the octave can be changed as well. I still have the ability to use the menu to set the note, velocity, and length of the step I'm on, just like I can in the step grid. And velocity is interactive with the keyboard in real time. I can switch to another step in the current bar by using these two buttons on the right. This allows me to edit all of the notes in the bar at the current zoom level, all without leaving keyboard mode. To demonstrate, I'll quickly build an ascending and descending scale pattern of 16th notes within the current bar. As the sequence runs, this light will flash every time the step you're on plays. You can delete the note of the step you're on just by pressing the delete key. And if there are multiple bars in the track, I can advance to the next bar with this button. To exit keyboard mode and go back to the step grid, I just press the Alt button again. Back in the step grid, I've added a feature that allows me to hear the current step. This works when the sequence is stopped. If I want to loop over one bar continuously, I can do that now as well by holding the Alt button and pressing on the bar. While that bar is looping, I can also change the loop to any other bar. The switchover occurs when the current bar reaches its end. When I'm ready to stop looping, I simply disengage the loop and the sequence will carry on from that location. And last, in the mix grid, I've added a new feature that changes the relative length of each note in a track, similar to the velocity and transpose feature. The resolution of each step is maintained so that all steps can be returned to their original relative length. It's been nearly one year since I put out the first video, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this development play out from the beginning. And if you're just now tuning in and want to have a full introduction to the sequencer without going back to the beginning, have a look at video number 10 in the series.